Whose advice would benefit you more? Ow! Drake's? Ski Master? It's your boy Ski Master Slump God. About the construction of a, of a track? Or Anthony Fantano's? Now, Certified Lover Boy was one of my least favorite Drake projects so far when it came out. Please shut your face, dude. What can we learn from Anthony Fantano, the internet's busiest music nerd, uh, about how to perform better in the studio? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. I was watching Anthony Fantano's most recent review of the of the recent Drake release. Anthony Fantano represents a cautionary tale. Very simply put, to the best of my knowledge, Anthony Fantano is not a practitioner. Anthony Fantano's Wikipedia page shows at best a casual relationship. Music composition could be wrong, but that's what the Wikipedia page shows. And yet has the unmitigated gall, temerity, and uh, narcissism to pontificate broadly on artists' cultural production. The notion that Anthony Fantano is in any position to critique in a meaningful and substantive way Drake's cultural output is ridiculous. Now, am I the world's largest Drake fan? No, I do like Drake's music. I'm more given to Ski Mask the Slump God or X as an example. When we think about it, we think about the idea of if you're a musician, if you're a painter, if you're a designer, Whose advice in the studio should you be taking? If you're, a, if you're an aspiring, uh, aspiring musician or rapper or whatever, whose insight would you benefit from more? Ski masks, drakes, exes? If you had an opportunity to, to speak, speak with them about what it is that you're making, whose advice would benefit you more? Drakes, ski masks about the construction of a, of a track, or Anthony Fantano's? But what does that have to do with visual art and design? And what does it have to do with education? Education has become a retail space. The student is paying, what are they getting in return? The net result of that is that professor, college professors are overwhelmed with responsibilities. Many teachers quit practicing. That is exceedingly problematic for mentoring and for the student. When I'm thinking about the criticism that I receive in my, in my studio, when I have people, when I have students, when I have friends, when I have colleagues that come into the studio, it's not that I'm making a qualitative assessment about their work. I'm not saying, you know, if they're a great, artist, designer, or musician, then I can listen to their work. I ask the simple question of, are they in the struggle? Are they in the same struggle that, that, that I'm participating in? Wrestling with the work, trying to come to grips with, with the complexities, the difficulties, the challenges, the beauty, the ugliness, the horror of making work. If they are, they don't have to be good at what they're doing. They don't have to be good at what they're doing. They simply have to be in the struggle. The most important kind of relationships that we can have as artists, designers, musicians, writers, is people who are in the same milieu, in the genre, that are providing us with feedback, feedback, nuanced feedback on the challenges that we're facing. And as a teacher, as a college professor, as a teacher, as a mentor, the most important thing that one can do is maintain the viability, the life, and the energy in their own practice. That is the single thing that makes, that allows a teacher to speak with any kind of authority. The conceptual authority that's necessary in order to aid individuals in their personal development.